A lot of time is spent selecting the best wireless RF modules for our embedded design projects, but one key component we often overlook is the antenna. The right antenna makes all the difference, and very little consideration is given to the antenna location and how the nearby objects may affect it. On this episode of Tech Ventures, I will discuss antenna basics and things to consider before beginning your design. Hi, welcome back to Tech Ventures. My name is Lizina, and I'm the Technical Marketing Engineer at Future Electronics. If you're interested in checking out any previous Tech Ventures videos, then please click the link on the screen or check out the description box below. Simply put, an antenna is a conductor exposed in space. They radiate energy during transmission and absorb energy during reception. But how does an IoT antenna differ from a regular antenna? IoT devices are designed to optimize and enhance our daily lives. They are small and communicate over a longer or short range wirelessly, depending on the application, and ideally have long battery lives. All of these factors influence antenna design. In other words, the antenna can literally make or break your product. So if the wrong antenna is chosen, your devices might be impossible to reach in the field. Antennas are classified under two categories, external or internal, depending on whether it is external or internal to the device enclosure. Whip antennas, also known as rubber duck antennas, are the most commonly used external antennas. There are two types of whip antennas, one is called dipole and the other is called monopole. The performance of a dipole is more stable and easier to integrate. However, the performance of a monopole with the size reduced by half is highly dependent on the PCV ground plane. Whip antennas are used a lot in gateways and Wi-Fi routers. Internal antennas are available as ceramic chip, patch, PCB trace, and flex PCB antennas. Flex PCB antennas are dipoles. Their performance is not dependent on PCB size, but on the cable length as well as the object the antenna is attached to. Ceramic chip, patch, and PCB trace antennas are all dipole antennas. Their performance is highly dependent on PCB size, shape, keep out areas, as well as the antenna location. Some places where you might see these antennas are wearables, fitness trackers, or smart door locks. Antennas are not one size fits all. The next thing we must consider is the operating frequency. Wireless protocols use different frequencies and our chosen antenna must be fine-tuned for that frequency band of operation. The selection of an antenna also depends on the end user application, the available board space, cost, communication distance, and directivity. Different antennas are needed for different applications. The antenna should be placed as far as possible from noisy components on your PCB, such as batteries, motors, and metal parts of the design. The chances of interference are much higher and wireless performance of the device may be affected. After the antenna is selected, you need to keep the connector in mind. Type N, SMA, RP, SMA, UFL are the four most commonly used connectors with IoT RF modules. As IoT ecosystems advances to support high-density, low-latency networks and continue to incorporate new features into wireless radios and overall system layouts, antenna selection and design are more important than ever. Antennas are not simple, passive products. They are fundamental blocks in the creation of IoT applications. Remember, where there's a module, there is an antenna. We have several resources and tools at Future Electronics to help you with selecting the best components fit for your projects. If you need assistance or guidance at any step during your embedded design project, then please contact your local Future Electronics representative or visit us at futureelectronics.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Tech Ventures with Lazina.